O God, who instructs the hearts of your faithful by the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This has been a year distinguished by its strain on the human psyche and relationships, and this week surpasses them all. A man I respect who loves St. John's dearly, you know him as Bradley, challenged me to write most of the sermon before I knew the results of the election. Little did I know I would have so much time, and as the results fluctuated back and forth, sending us along with the rest of the nation and much of the world on a roller coaster of emotions. There are emotions that won't be settled anytime soon. The Swiss reformed theologian, Karl Barth counseled ministers to preach using the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. But for us, perhaps it's the Bible and the BCP and then a laptop, a cell phone, or some other device. He wanted us to remember that while we can create our sermons alone and in private, they must always connect with the lives of those around us. This gospel parable speaks of a wedding ceremony and of a bridegroom who does not arrive until midnight. Now, if you're a fan of the fiddler on the roof like I am, You've seen a Jewish wedding that occurs also at night, but not as late as midnight. This parable is striking in its divisions over what should be a joyous occasion. It defines people by character rather than by actions. It reveals the lack of preparation, a sense of scarcity, the expectations that people have of each other, and the useless advice given rather than understanding and real help. This is a bridal party. People know each other. They live near each other and are coming together for something greater than themselves. Yet the knowledge they have of each other does not lead to unity in the end, but divisions they do not overcome, but rather make more concrete. Unlike the parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin, this parable does not end in rejoicing on what should have been a very, very joyous occasion. Like the reading from the promise from the prophet Amos, the coming of the Lord is not always welcome or convenient. Instead, a tone of judgment and foreboding loom large. This is an aspect of our theology we tend to minimize and ignore. But if we look over the course of history, and see how people have interpreted the coming of the Lord. This has led to divisions, wars, exceptionalistic ideas, imperialism, and an emphasis on being heavenly minded and of little earthly good. Parables are designed with multiple layers, and this one has provided numerous lenses through the ages. And today, the scripture continues to speak to us from our context, through the lenses of our experiences, graced by the Holy Spirit. And as we look at this together, this parable offers up a mirror for us, for our own times, and also an opportunity for change. This parable is rife with division. Everyone has a particular role to play, and there are implicit and explicit expectations that are revealed as the parable unfolds. The number of bridesmaids, are equally divided, much like an equal division we have in our country. And if we are courageous and willing to be humble, we could see ourselves as each player in this parable. The bridesmaids without oil are noted to be foolish. Since their childhood, they would have known about the responsibility of bridesmaids, yet they were caught unprepared. The lack of preparation is not viewed as an event, but as a mark of their character. They are foolish, which led to the lack of planning for the unexpected. It would be easy to look at things from a physical standpoint, prepare for goodness sake, 
but this goes deeper. And it asks of us, how have we disciplined ourselves to prepare for the unexpected? How have we nurtured our inner lives so that when we are delayed or inconvenienced by another or a situation not of our own children, uh, not of our own choosing, are we still able to do what we are called to do? Are we still able to be who we are called to be when we are forced to wait? These foolish bridesmaids demonstrate an un unrealistic expectation that's common in emergencies. When things don't go as we hope, we often try to patch it together without digging deeper for the cause. We often flail around for an answer and follow suggestions that are not likely to get us to the end that we seek. We are also the wise bridesmaids. When we understand the world around us and prepare enough for the unexpected. But we are also these bridesmaids when we are selfish and we offer useless advice, ensuring our comfort and our place at the table, knowing that half likely will be missing. We are considered wise, but not holy, not compassionate, not good. We are also the bridegroom when we cause others hardship for our convenience, whether it is through fast fashion that clutters the landscape with disposable clothing, whether it is wiping out native plants for that which produces more, or cheap food that requires pesticides that harms migrants and the environment, or even such a thing as a mean or a threatening look to tell people to back off to make sure that we can get ahead in line. We are the bridegroom when we pretend not to know the people that we truly know or consider the plight that they are in. And then when we decide that we can determine who is in and who is out, we become the bridegroom. Somebody's missing in this story. It's the bride. She's missing. We can assume that she is here because the bridegroom is arriving for a reason, but she has no role in this parable. She has no voice. In scripture and tradition, the church of Jesus is the bride, where we once were a force to be reckoned with for good and for evil. We now have little power in the lives of our children, millennials, and society at large. When divisions are the story, where is the church? We have allowed the message of love and the generosity of God to be co-opted for wealth and security, for systems that make the poor poorer and the rich richer. All the while, we serve a Jesus who says, what you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. We have much too often hoarded our treasure and given futile advice or poorly thought out solutions to those in need. We have allowed people to be unprepared for the unexpected, labeling them as foolish. The bridesmaids with extra oil would have seen that the others were unprepared for an unexpected delay. We don't know if they implored the others to get oil when there may have been opportunity. We don't know why some were wiser and some had excess and some foolishly did not have enough. But usually we don't know the why, but we do have eyes to see what's going on around us and we do know the what. This is a parable that has no heroes constrained by the context of its time. But the beauty of a parable is that it morphs as it is told, shedding light on what is and offering hope of what life may become. So I offer you the opportunity of what you would do today in the 21st century without the constraints of the first century. At the time of the telling of the story, this people did not have a resurrected Lord, no bride of Christ, no history of the church to learn from, but we do, we have a resurrected savior. We can learn from the story 
and not repeat the ending. God is always doing the unexpected. And if we follow in God's footsteps, so can we. We can create an ending where the bride, the church of Jesus, the church of the risen Lord, has a voice. We can take a look at the divisions that surround the nation in a world that is in desperate need for joy, righteousness, beauty, and refuge, and we can bring reconciliation. Because today, most brides, having waited for the groom, would wait for the rest of their wedding party and eventually rejoice because everyone is at the table. Amen.